Really? <clears throat> Got everything? Okay. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome again to the Prophecy Conference. Now, before we get into our study, shall we ask our Heavenly Father for His blessing and for His guidance as we open His Word? Shall we pray? Gracious Father in Heaven, we thank You for the many blessings that You are providing. We thank You for bringing us together, showing us that which we need to understand for this time in Earth's history. We ask now, Father, <clears throat> for Your watch care. May it be Your words, Your message that is given. We ask that our minds may be opened, that your spirit may attend us, and that your angels will surround us. Help us to understand that which you would have us to know at this time. Bless each one that is attending, either here in person or by internet. Show us, Father, so that we may be able to grow and give the message that you would have us to give at this time in earth's history. For this, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're going to recap a couple quick things from yesterday. We were looking and studying at Daniel 8, 13, and 14. Now, for us to consider this, open your Bibles with me, please, to Daniel 8, 13, and 14. We'll look exactly what these words have for us at this time. Now, as we were addressing this yesterday, we are looking at a vision that was given to Daniel. And this, da this vision was given in the third year of King Belshazzar. But Daniel didn't come to understand this until the first year of King Darius. As Daniel said, Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, how long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? Now, this conference has been to teach us more about numbers as symbols as well as how to use many of the tools that are currently being presented. One of those tools is, you call it the Gematria, Gematria. Gematria Converter. Now, as, as I asked yesterday, brother, if it's possible, here on the Gematria calculator, could you type in the word certain, C-E-R-T-A-I-N? Now, I want you to see something here. Here you have the reverse sum of the word certain, and it shows 119. Now, would you add to certain the word saint? Here, for the reverse sum, you have 191. So this phrase, in two different ways, gives us the digits of 9-11. Is this something that we need to pay attention with? Now, when we're looking at this, at this particular verse, Daniel 8.13, we are given a definition. This second saint is saying to the wonderful numberer, how long shall be the vision concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation? Yet in the next verse, And he, the wonderful numberer, said unto me, unto 2,300 evening morning, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now, <clears throat> I look at 191. I look at that as, as a symbol 
that is important that's saying to me, pay attention. Now, Daniel 8.14 can properly be paired with Daniel 8.26. If we please read that. Daniel 8.26. And it says, And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Now we're going to stop there for just a moment. What does it mean when something is true? What are we seeing with something that is true? Is this something that's correct? Is this something that's right? So we have two different visions here. Now one of the things that I look at when we have two different visions Here we have Daniel 8.13. This gives us the vision of the daily and the transgression of desolation. What is the daily? Paganism. What is the transgression of desolation? Papalism. In keeping with what Hiram Edson was presenting in 1856, we would have the daily and the transgression of desolation going from 723 B.C. to 1798 A.D. Does this make sense? Now, here, Daniel 8.14 and Daniel 8.26, we have the vision that is true. What is Christ saying to Daniel? Can a vision that is true be trusted? Should the vision that is true be set aside? So, if this is the true vision from 457 to 1844, this is something that is important for us to know. And if, if we are using our gematria calculator, and we have 119-191-911. We have symbols that are saying to us, this is something for you to address. It's something for you to watch. Aren't those also like three witnesses in a sense? Yes, those are like three witnesses in a sense. Because you have 119, it's total reverse here of 911, and in the middle you have 191. Okay? Now, Can we still see the charts? Okay. So, 9, 1, 1. Let's see if any of this occurs. Now, yesterday we were addressing the way that we would show the 2300 days, the way that Father Miller showed the 2300 days, the way that Ellen Harmon, James White, Hiram Edson, Joseph Bates showed the 2300 days that we have here on the charts. Did we not look at this yesterday? Now, I want you to consider something. I have learned from brothers and sisters here in this room 
many things over the last several months. The next point, after brother here has been showing us how to use these tools, another brother had made a comment several months ago. And it's a comment that I am very grateful for. Here we have a time period of 434 years. We were having a conversation. I don't remember if it was by chat or by email. But Brother Stephen brought out that in this prophecy, the midpoint here was 191 BC. Now do you see why I'm getting so excited about this? Here's 191. Now, when you have a midpoint of a time period, that means it's in the middle. What happened in 191 BC? Does anybody know? Well, I love history. I love to study history. 191 BC was the Battle of Thermopylae. It's where the Greeks and the Romans fought a major engagement and the Greeks lost. It's where Rome began its ascendancy in the world. So if we take this 434 years and we divide it, we have on either side, 217. So, what is 217? Midnight. It is the symbol for midnight. It is the symbol for July 21st. It is the symbol that, again, we need to pay attention. What happened with July 21st in 1844, we had midnight. And midnight then led 25 days later to the midnight cry. But what I found even more interesting here of this was that you have Two periods on either side of this 217 of 91 years. Now, on either side of this, you have something else that's happening. You have something else to consider. Now, I'm going to come back to this in just a moment. Here, we have a period of 49 years. What was the entire period that we had here? 490 years. One of the things that Elder Jeff brought out several times, if you have a fractal, a percentage of a time period being represented, then the whole period is being represented. What is a 490 year time period? What was this 490 year time period for? Was it not a time of probation? Was it not for Daniel's people to understand that the Messiah was going to come? Was it not showing them the time of their visitation?
here we have these two 91 year periods. 91 years from 408 takes us to 317 BC. What happened in 317 BC? Any historians here? Here's what we find. Have you ever heard the name of Ptolemy? Which one? Ptolemy the first, known as Ptolemy I Soter. <coughs> okay? All right. We'll do that. Okay. We'll do that. So. Why is this important for us to note? Ptolemy the first Soter. In the Greek, Soter means savior. Okay? Now, Ptolemy the first was one of Alexander's trusted generals. 317 BC is coming up six years roughly after the death of Alexander. Ptolemy was a man that felt he should be king. Ptolemy was married. He and his wife were set up as king and queen of Egypt. But Ptolemy, his wife needed a lady in waiting. So she chose one of her mother's first cousins as a lady in waiting. This woman had been married to a very minor king and now comes to Egypt to be lady in waiting for the queen of Egypt. And not long after, Ptolemy I Soter decides he must marry his queen's lady in waiting. Now, is this a marriage according to God's plan? Is this the type of league that anyone should enter into? Not at all, right? No. Now, on this other side, here, I have to check a, some notes I've got. We have another point of history. In 65 BC, at that time, Rome establishes itself against Syria. 
Rome enters a league with Syria to say, we are going to defend you. Yes, they went in. They defeated them in a battle. But then they came in and said, we're going to be defending you just as we are with all of these other nations that we have taken by conquest. Now what's interesting to me is from this 91 year period, we come down to 27 AD. Why is 27 AD important for us? What do we see here? Baptism of Christ. Baptism of Christ, as we're looking here in the 70th week. But now we have this intervening time period between when Ptolemy entered into his league with Bernice and when Rome entered into its league with Syria. Now, this particular time frame, 2300 years, 2300 evening morning, what does Sister White say about this? Is this not the central pillar and foundation of Adventism? Now, if something is a central pillar, if something is the foundation, is it not the basis for our faith? Now, please consider this. From here to here. We have a time period of 252 years. Here we have 49, one-tenth of 490. Here we have 252, one-tenth of 2520. Here's our central pillar. Here is our foundation. When we start saying that the messages on this chart are false, when we are saying that this should be set aside, Are we not turning our backs on the symbols that our Heavenly Father has given us so that we will know our time in Earth's history? Now, here we have the symbol of midnight. We have the symbol of September 11. November 9th. We're now shown 191 right in the middle of this timeline. All of these symbols, all of this has come because brothers and sisters have been coming together to study together, to look upon what the Bible's had to say, to consider carefully the tools that God is presenting, to consider what is in Scripture for our edification today. 
We are choosing to father to to follow Father Miller's rules. We are looking at these rules that everything in the Bible is good for instruction, for edification, for correction. As we look through here, does it not say to us that we are at the time of the end? Is it not showing us that we cannot afford to set aside anything that is contained within Scripture? Now, I haven't yet worked out what 91 itself is supposed to represent. 7 times 13. Okay, 7 times 13. It's a quarter of a year, roughly. Okay. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> may I use this? I'm sorry. <laughs> My apology. See if it's on. The four seven times yes. that we read about in Leviticus chapter 26 occurred right. over a 91 year period. So Manasseh was taken captive in six. 77. Right. So that begins, that relates to the first seven times in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 18. Right. The pride of the power was taken. And then the fourth, seventh times is relating to the destruction of Jerusalem. In 586. Uh, 586. So that's a period of 91 years. Okay. So. When Manasseh was taken captive, when Jerusalem was destroyed, gives us this period of 91 years. We have a quarter of a year. We have 7 times 13. So many symbols. So many pieces coming together. Now, just another point. Uh, yes. I don't know if it can apply, but I'm just bringing up another 91. It talks about Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. So this is from Luke chapter 2, verse 36. Right. Uh, so she uh, was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of four score and four years. So she lived with her husband seven years. And then we can add to that 84 years. So that's a, that would be um, a total of 91 years, um, which you can connect her from being married until this year time where she's going to uh, prophesy concerning Christ when he enters the temple to be dedicated? Okay. What was interesting about this with Anna? Anna and one other understood at the time that Christ was presented at the temple that this was the Messiah. Two people. One man, one woman. 
How old would Christ have been at the time that he was presented at the temple? Was that for his circumcision? Okay. So no, he, no, I would disagree. I think that? I would disagree. That he, that, that's not a circumcision; that's his dedication. So uh, there was in the Levitical law that a woman, when she has a, a male child, that she had to sort of separate her in a sense for thirty-three days. I think it was thirty-three days. So then 33 days would have transpired, and then she would be sort of like ceremonial clean, and then she could maybe make her way to the temple. Okay, so that, that would have been after, what, 40 days after giving birth? So the 40 days when Christ is being presented at the temple is also another typification of the 40 days when he was in the wilderness? Now, how does this apply for us today? How should this apply for us today? That's something we're going to have to puzzle out. Now, are there any questions of what we have presented on this board so far? Is this fairly clear? It's a period of 91 years. I'm not saying A.D. or B.C. I'm saying 91 years because here from 65 B.C. when Rome conquered Syria to 27 A.D. If you took these and added them together, you would see 92. But as we are aware, when you make the change from B.C. to A.D., we subtract one on one side, and it gives us the, the correct time period. Is that? Okay. So we're talking strictly about the periods of time. Now... All of this adds in to understandings that we already have. But when we can look now to see the midpoint of this entire period, and we can then see how this comes right down to the foundation of the faith, we now can see more clearly that not only was Desmond Ford wrong in setting aside Daniel 8, 13, and 14, that he was attempting to destroy the faith of the pioneers. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on any of this at the moment? Uh, what, what is the start of the 217 or the, the middle line here? If you don't have any dates. Okay. Uh, I came in later, sorry. Not a problem. Okay. The midpoint, you have 408 BC, you have 27 AD. So if we additively put these together, we have a total here of 434 years. Now, we know and we can establish that from 457 B B.C. when Ezra returned to Jerusalem, that there would be 49 years for the streets and the walls to be rebuilt in troublous times. Correct? Yes. Okay. So... We know that this 49 years begins in 457 and would then end in 408. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Now, actually, the second line was not the 17 that I didn't realize about, but I mean, going over the whole thing is beneficial for those who came in late, also. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I don't actually think there's 49 years for the streets and walls. It doesn't refer to the streets and walls for those seven weeks. And that's, that's just a misreading. Okay. Yeah. It just right. says the streets and walls are going to be rebuilt, but it doesn't connect it to the 49 years. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, because the streets and walls are built in 444. But people read it that way, but that's not what it's saying. But it's just giving a period of 49 years, which is a jubilee. Okay. And that's to match to the, the sabbatical cycle at the end. So it divides it in that way. Now, the other thing is we have that 62 weeks in the middle, right. which you have divided into uh, 217. And the significance of 217 is midnight, but it's also on June 22nd in 217 BC that you have the Battle of Raphia. Correct. And um, we also know that uh, 217 is... 31 times 7, because it's 62 weeks. And, and we're going to look at that when we look at the, the midst of the week, but 31 times 7, there Jesus is crucified in the midst of the week in 31 AD. That's 7 times 31. So that symbolizes that midnight symbol as well. Okay. And, of course, it's the middle of from the first day of the first month to the tenth day of the seventh month in 1844, that we have that June uh, 21st, or July 21st date uh, for midnight. So it's, it, it all ties together. There's so much uh, beauty and symmetry um, in this message of the 70 weeks. Okay. Now, any other questions on the board? Okay. It's the same as line above. So here you would have it's just the Battle of Thermopylae in the middle. That's I think what she's trying to figure that out. That's one ninety one BC. Right. That's what she missed. <clears throat> there were several battles of Thermopylae. This happened to be the Battle of Thermopylae where Rome defeated Greece. And that's a point in history. It's not something that can be controverted. So you have 191. As the midpoint of this 434 year period. Does that make sense? We are, we are keeping the 49 as a symbol, right? Yes. I would say yes to keep it as a symbol. What, the 49 years, you mean? Yes. That's a jubilee cycle. Correct. That's, that, that's the, the part that completes this structure. We'll look at that when we look at the midst of the week, but if you didn't have that jubilee cycle at the beginning, the one tenth of the four hundred and ninety, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have the structure at all. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Any other thoughts? Any um, other what yes. What is the four if if the four oh eight is not when the streets and the walls were built, what is the importance of the four oh eight? It's a jubilee cycle. It's a jubilee cycle. It, it's, it, it's, it's showing you the structure. It, it's not meant to be the date for any event. Okay, now, what we're going to do is we're, I'm going to erase the board. Any other comments or questions at the moment? Is there anything I haven't addressed? Now, one of the points in order to establish specific history, 
We are to make use of the Bible. But the Bible that William Miller used, the Bible that Ellen Harmon used, that James White used, this Bible was a bit different from what we have today. Why is it different? Because it has the Apocrypha. Now, in the book of Maccabees, we have a lot of history. Now, we have in history dates that can be affixed that we can consider and making use of the tools that have been presented to us we can glean even further information. Alexander the Great was the son of Philip of Macedon. Now, was Alexander the Great the leader of Greece for a time? Was he predicted in biblical prophecy? How was he predicted in in biblical prophecy? He was the horn of the goat. He was the great horn of the goat. Now, in order for Alexander to become king, his father would no longer be king. Correct? I found it interesting in putting this together. That Philip of Macedon died on the 19th day of the seventh month of the biblical year 3710. However, if we look at the Mayan calendar, we would look at this calendar as being written, showing now I look at this and I see 718 what do you see? now The thing about the 19th day of the seventh month of 3710 means that Alexander took the throne on the 20th day of the seventh month of that year. But when we look at the Julian calendar, Alexander takes the throne on the 22nd of October. Now, Alexander as the great horn of the goat would then have reigned, if my calculation is correct, for 4,617 days. Because he assumed the throne in 336 B.C., he died in 323 B.C. Now, the way in which the Maccabees are recording their dates refer to the time of which the Greeks have taken over in Egypt. Ptolemy I Soter began his reign in 313 B.C. So when did, um, when did he die? What date? 
The date that I was able to find would have been something like the 13th of June. Okay, that's what I have here. Of 323 BC. Yeah. And that came from Encyclopedia Britannica, their biography on Alexander the Great. Now, if 313 BC is when Ptolemy I Soter, or as, as we were addressing early on, Ptolemy the first savior, then as we go through the book of Maccabees, we should be able to affix other dates and come to understandings of different events that were occurring. Now, part of this helps us because there are multiple items that are being noted within the Maccabees for our edification. One of the major things as Brother Theodore was noting, was that there is a jubilee cycle from 457 to 408, which is a period of 49 years. If we take a look within these jubilee cycles. We should be able to see from the book of Maccabees that the jubilee, the allowing the land to rest was something that Ezra reinstituted when they came back into the promised land. Now, is that important for us to note? And why would it be important for us to note? Why is it important for us to see the land resting? Uh, because you understand that uh, for 1,000 years, this uh, land will rest. <clears throat> Let's address this. Saul, son of Kish, came to the throne in 1097 BC. Right? And the year in which Judah was no longer a people. Forty-six years after Israel was taken, the northern people were taken, would have brought us to 607. During these years, during this time of 490 years, did the land rest? Did our Heavenly Father ordain that the land was to enjoy its Sabbaths while Israel and Judah were in captivity? Was this important to be noted? Is this not written in the book of Jeremiah? Is this not written within Scripture? Where do we find evidence from this? Now, as I'm going through the book of the Maccabees, we 
we have years that are noted as being the years of allowing the land to rest. If you turn, if you have the ability, and you may not, but if you were to consider 1 Maccabees 6, verses 49 and 53, you would find the following. But with them that were in Beth Shurah, he made peace, for they came out of the city because they had no victuals, no food there to endure the siege, it being a year of rest to the land. Yet, at the last, their vessels being without victuals or food, for that it was the seventh year, and they in Judea that were delivered from the Gentiles had eaten up the residue of the store. What you would find... is that this, because of the way that the Maccabees are recorded, we would be taking 313 B.C. This would have been the 150th year of the reign of the Greeks. So we would see this as 163 B.C. Now, I've considered this. I have looked that if this was the seventh year, then this being the time when the land would be resting, we would also be able to then determine that 191 B.C., was a time where the land was allowed to rest. 408 and 457. 457 would have been the beginning when Ezra returned. 408 would have been the 49th year. But every seven years, the land was to rest. Now, if the land was being allowed to rest, even in the times of the Greek rule, and was allowed to rest when Ezra returned under the Persians, is this something that we, today, should carefully consider? Because what's really happening when the land is resting? The land is given its Sabbaths. Now, if the land is receiving its Sabbaths, that was to be a time when man was also to have a sabbatical year. When we consider that our Heavenly Father had to say to the children of Israel many times, you have not kept my Sabbaths. Is he speaking in the same manner to us today? The 70 weeks has a lot yet to teach us. The 70 weeks has a lot of symbols to show us. So far today we have covered...
symbols of 490 for a time of probation. We have covered 158 of that of a league, whether it is a good league or whether it is a bad league. We have looked in the past at 220, a time of restoration, and now we have a very specific symbol, 911, that we are seeing in our history and in biblical history. All of these symbols are important for us. All of these symbols have meaning that we need to study. Any question or any thought? Okay. So, <clears throat> shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the many blessings that you are providing. We thank you for the warnings and for the guidance that you are sending to us at this time. Bless the speakers today. Guide us, each one, that we may be more prepared to listen and to learn from that which you would have us to understand. Direct us now. Please guide us, we ask. We pray and we thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen.